So you're almost seeing double here. Yes, I do have the Marvel versions of both Splendor and Love Letter out here. And the question I had myself as I walked around the basement was which one of these would I rather play? Would I rather play the original Splendor or Splendor Marvel? And would I rather play Love Letter, the original, or Marvel Love Letter? Hmm. Okay, so the basics here, Splendor has these really cool gem discs that are temporary resources to purchase cards from an open market. There are three different level of cards, which are easy, medium, and hard to complete. And you simply have to discard the resources that are listed on that left side of the card to take it into your player area. At the top, you're gonna to see a permanent resource and or uh, victory points. And so you're just gonna be collecting these, building up your engine of permanent resources, which is what the cards offer. There are gonna be noble tiles that allow you to gain them if you simply have the cards in your area. Now those are the permanent gems, not necessarily the temporary ones. So on a player's turn, they're simply going to take a card from the area to bank it, and if they do, they get to take a, a wild gem. Now that means they're not buying it, they're simply just putting it in reserve. They can also buy a card from the central play area to put into their personal player area by paying the resources necessary, either from temporary or permanent gems. And the last thing a player can do is simply take resources. You can take three different resources of any kind. You could take two of the same resource as long as there's at least four in that stack. That's it. It's super easy. The game is so streamlined. It's so quick, your turn is very fast, and whether you have two to four players, this game ends in 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes max, if you've got a real thinker on your hands. So Splendor is a light strategy entry-level game that I think works. It works really well, and it's just a full-on race. Um, so I think it's just awesome. The player who meets or exceeds 15 points on their uh, cards and their noble tiles, is going to trigger the end of the game. Everybody gets equal turns and then you add up who has the most points, they win. Super easy. Now in Splendor Marvel, you have these gems that are not the same, but the one thing you get here is you get all these recognizable characters from the Marvel Universe, right? The MCU. And in Splendor, you've got just generic fantasy folks like this nobleman, or another nobleman, or this pretty lady, or this knight. He kind of looks like he's got knight in shining armor kind of thing. And here you've got Thanos, and Doctor Strange, and Hulk, and Captain America. I mean, you've got these characters that are super recognizable. So on the cards, you're gonna see all of that. You're gonna see those characters, you're gonna see that artwork, and it might be a little bit more engaging for you. It might be more familiar than, again, generic fantasy, um, you know, creatures and characters, like in medieval folks. Um, the other thing that Splendor Marvel offers is this card that essentially tells you how to trigger the end of the game. Now, the end of the game uh, triggers here in Splendor at 15 points or more. And in this game, it's 16 points. And you have to have a card of every single color represented in your area. And that means that you got to have one of all of it. And here you could probably win the game by just focusing on three or four different uh, colors but you have to have each card represented and you have to have a green disc. And only one player can have one green disc at a time. So there's just enough green discs for everybody in the game, but how you get them is by completing a level three card. And the level three cards show a green disc. So when you complete it, you take it, and now you have one of the requirements needed to trigger the end of the game. As long as you have 16 points uh, collected among your in here, noble cards are location cards. And then there's one other difference that you're gonna get in um, Marvel Splendor, and that is the Avengers card. 
There are these Avenger symbols that you're going to see on the top of cards that are in addition to the resource that it generates, uh, which is uh, the uh, stones, right? The, um, what are those stones he puts in his little gauntlet? The gauntlet stones, infinity stones. And you're gonna see these A's and the player who has at least three will take this, the first person to get to three. And if anyone ever exceeds three or the person who has this with more A's on the, the top of their cards, they take it. So this is kind of like a wandering three victory points that you keep as long as you have the most, um, or if you've gotten it, you're tied for the most because someone has to exceed you to take it. Um, so this is another way to earn victory points that's not in the original game, Splendor. So what's my take? What's my verdict? Splendor or Splendor Marvel? I am going to say Splendor Marvel. Now, not because of the Marvel Universe. I actually like that there's this bonus floating victory point condition that gives you another way to earn points. And I also like that this game encourages players to diversify. It's not required to diversify in Splendor, nor is it required to get a level three card in Splendor. You can win this game without getting one. Now it's kind of hard, but you can do it through the nobles and you can do it through just getting a bunch of twos and ones and maybe threes in level two cards. So this game allows players to be super sneaky <laughs> and maybe not really expand and play the whole game. I think Splendor Marvel asks you to play all of it, and you have to worry about the locations. You have to worry about the Avenger majority card. You have to worry about getting cards in all different kinds because you have, that's how you can, that's the only way you can like trigger the end of the game and possibly win. So I think that this actually offers something more game wise, like strategy wise, not necessarily quality wise when it comes to theme and or resources. These gems, meh, meh, I like them less. I like them less. But I like the two additions that this game offers that makes this game just maybe a little bit more balanced and strategic. Okay, moving on to Love Letter and Marvel Love Letter. So in Love Letter, players have a hand of one, and when it's their turn, they will draw a card from the top of the deck, and then they will look at both cards, playing one face up in front of them, and then they will do what that card says, whatever that card says. Each card has a numeric value, and it also has an action, and there are a set number of cards in the game. And of these 16 cards, they are divided by numbers one through eight, and you've got five number ones, and those allow you to guess somebody at the table. Um, then there are two number twos, two number threes, two number fours, two number fives, and then one, six, seven, and eight. And you essentially want to eliminate the other players at the table by guessing who they are, by comparing cards and eliminating someone with a lower value. But the cards are really interesting and they have these fascinating combinations that really give you tough choices, or sometimes no choice at all if you have the same card. But you want to um, eliminate everybody else at the table mid-round, or if the game ends because you've drawn all the cards and played them, you want to have the highest number card left in your hand, which makes the princess, which is number eight, incredibly valuable, or if eight's been eliminated, number seven, which is the countess, and so forth. And so the game is a fascinating play of actively trying to go after anybody at the table who you think <laughs> might be a threat, which is everybody. And the last player standing each round will gain a love letter. Um, that is, of course, the name of the game, but it's just a red cube. And based on the amount of players, you will want to earn a certain number to win the game. Pretty straightforward, really simple. The fact that there are only 16 cards, but fascinating combinations. And I love the artwork. I mean, this is a really great game. And the fact that it comes in a little pouch, brilliant. It's a very small game, very transportable. Now, what does Marvel Love Letter offer? What it does is it takes this competitive, everyone's for themselves in love letter and makes it semi-cooperative in the sense that you've got one group of people at the table, anywhere between one and five players, and those people are all working together to defeat one player at the table who is taking on the role of Thanos. And Thanos has an entirely different deck that Thanos plays by, which includes the Infinity Stones and that deck is very different from the deck the players are playing with, which resemble more like the original Love Letter deck. 
but they're playing together. They're not necessarily allowed to communicate or cooperate verbally or explicitly though, which I think is a little problematic when you want a cooperative game. But they are playing to lower the health track marker on Thanos. Meanwhile, Thanos is racing to get the gauntlet and filled up with the Infinity Stones. And once he's got all of them, all six of them, he will win the game. Or Thanos might win by the hero's track running out of life. Essentially, they died. So there are two tracks that you keep, uh, you keep uh, marks on. So which one of these two do I want to play now? Well, I have to say, I do appreciate the original. I like Love Letter better than I like Marvel Love Letter. I think that the changing dynamic of the cooperative team versus one player at the table who has to play Thanos and kind of functions absolutely in a unique, fascinating way. Not necessarily the dynamic I'm looking for. I wanna play Love Letter. More specifically, I would love to play Batman Love Letter. Um, that's my favorite version of Love Letter. But between these two, I'm going with the classic. I'm going the, with the classic because it's straight, it's streamlined, it's easy. Um, it just, it feels so good. Like the original, did such a good job of introducing this kind of game to players that it just is so comfortable. And when I think about this game, I don't want someone at the table to be the only person I go after. Because in Love Letter, the fun part of this is that you get to go after everybody at various times in the game. And it's way more fun that way to like kind of target somebody because they have more love letters. They've won more previous rounds. So you want to go after them. You want to team up against them. But then later you want to team up against somebody else with everybody else at the table. So it makes it a little bit more fun and dynamic. And I like the, just the plain, straight, competitive nature of the original compared to this cooperative version of Marvel. And I have to say that the um, uh, the theme and the um, you know MCU people in the game doesn't necessarily do anything more for me than the original love letter. So if I'm picking up a game, it's going to be this one. Thanks everybody for joining me for my deeper dive into the differences between Splendor and Splendor Marvel and Love Letter and Love Letter Marvel because I have all of them. I've played all of them. And I do have a little bit of a preference one way or the other. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one of the two are you leaning more towards? Which game would you rather play right now? As for me, I've got some work to do.